not. Spiky bits. That's right, hobby maniacs. We've got your top eight things you need to know about making an Imperial Knight army. Well, I guess not a whole army, but working them into any existing Imperial army or perhaps the most effective ways to put them into Imperial armies. But we'll give you some ideas an example army uh, as well that we're going to be building here in the studio by, by that. I mean, you know, we'll probably get it done by Christmas, but either way, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Oh my goodness, but something has to be said for these huge freaking knights. Now, I'm sure a lot of people have already seen all the videos out there already explaining, you know, every little thing about the books. We're not going to bore you with that information. I will tell you this is a 120 page codex. There's 12 night data sheets in here, nine traditions or house rules. Five of those are Questorus, four of those are Mechanicus, 29 stratagems six generic warlord traits nine house specific warlord traits because remember you have nine five plus four 22 relics and of course the free blade chart now we're not really going to talk about the free blade stuff although i definitely encourage you to read through it because canis rex is actually pretty good and there's some opportunity there for some really cool customization uh for your hobby which i think is definitely worth talking about but this is more straight meat and potatoes yo let's talk about you know some stuff that you're gonna see or you're gonna want to try on the tabletop so first off uh, this is just explaining about what questorus allegiance means between the households and then also mechanicus it's very simple stuff right there the things that you need to know about building your army right off the bat are the lances and the household tradition special rules for battle forged armies right here and it's very simple stuff uh, to get the benefits of traditions. You're going to want to run them in a super heavy detachment. Remember super heavy detachments three and it gives you three command points and you know, as a benefit, but there is the drawback that you do not get those command points unless you take at least three Questorus class or Dominus class. So if you fill this out with armagers, you're not gonna get that bonus, which is kind of a bummer, but understandable nonetheless, because for you know 164 points at the cheapest, for right around you know 480, you could have three command points for some baby knights, and that's not too shabby to be quite honest. So I'm glad that GW got that feedback and kind of locked that loop in there real quick, but also they're forcing you to get the benefits from the household special rules or the trait system by taking this super heavy detachment. So just keep that in mind. You can definitely take an auxiliary and, you know, field your knight. You can play a stratagem that we're going to talk about, become a character, get a warlord trait, which is pretty neat but you're not going to get that household benefit and there's nine of them and they're all pretty good in their own right but we're going to talk about the top three if you heard the podcast on the long war you probably already know them so you might want to skip that section because <laughs> we we definitely hammered that point home here's the traditions right here like i said we're not going to go over all of them but just be aware that they are right next to here here's the traditions right here like i said we're not going to go over them we did the top three but they're definitely there for you to be aware of. All right, let's fast forward to or go back and talk about some of the changes to units and some of the new units that you should really be aware of. Although most folks are already tracking what's happening here. The Armager Helvern is a gangster when it comes to shooting. 174 for two of these auto cannons, heavy 2D3. Ignore the penalty, the neg one for moving and firing this heavy weapon. That's going to come in huge. We're going to talk about it here shortly. Very big, very good for 174 with a total of four 2D3 shots, or four D3 shots at next at seven. Neg one, three damage. Anything three damage in the game. Just put this in your brain pan. It doesn't matter what book we're talking about. If something does three damage, you need to look closer at it because it's probably really good in some sort of way. That being said, uh, these aren't quite you know sp as spammable as we would like but we're still but there's still money and I think you're gonna see a lot of benefits here with those guys 
The Perceptor we're not going to really touch on. My Paladin. The Gallant. The Gallant is huge. Huge change here, folks. 350 points for this bad boy. It used to be 389, so once you add in the weapons, the Gauntlet, and the Reaper Chainsword, it came down a little bit. The base points cost, we're going to talk about some of the changes there, too, in one of our points. Five attacks now. Five. Hits on a two up. Incredible. This is an incredible whirling melee of giant robot death right here. This guy is nuts. And the fact that he has the Thunder, Thunder Strike Gauntlet is going to be huge uh, for some of the additional combos and abilities we're going to talk about here in this video as well. Knight Castellan is the more shootier counterpart of old Adhab, a.k.a. the Valiant. <laughs> uh, he's probably worth taking in certain scenarios, but we're not really going to focus on him. We're going to talk more about the Valiant, because what's the point of having a giant freaking robot to just kind of sit back and shoot? That's stupid. That's clown shoes. Get up in people's faces, kick them, bop them, twist them, flame them, hit them with the harpoon, all of those things twice if you can, and then charge in, because... These guys are literally walking Bane Blades with, uh, well, I guess they have two more wounds than a Bane Blade, but still, they're amazeballs. And this guy is probably one of the better ones out there. For 595 points stock, he comes, you probably already heard all this stuff, the Shield Breaker missiles, the Conflagration Cannon, the Siege Breaker Cannons, whatever. The Harpoon is where it's at. You gotta make sure this thing hits. Twin Melted Guns two of these things on this bad boy it's just it just it's very hard to find something better for the points cost that does what it does so be aware of these stats that he's strength eight and remember all these guys are strength eight so we start talking about something else that's going to come into play uh very very shortly his movement's only 10 now but that's okay he's a little bit slow but we got we got a, we got a solution for that just be aware gallant class dominus Helverns. All of those guys are good. So those were kind of like our points two and three. <laughs> now going up to our fourth thing you really need to know about the Knights is the points reductions. And there's some really solid points reductions here uh, that you're gonna see. That is right here. So right off the bat, your base points cost went down from 320 to 285. Rapid Fire Battle Cannon staying the same. It's still really good. Avenger Cannon went down 20 points. It was 95. And pretty much everything else is the same. But those right there were pretty, pretty huge. So now where you were around, what, like 450 for a decent showing with a knight, I believe it was. Now you're going to be more around the low 400s. But the Errant is 350, which is just super spectacular points-wise there. Now here's the, I have the breakdown from last summer when we did all of the the knights here. And here they are. So the Errant used to be 430, the Gallant used to be 389. So all high, high to mid fours and some as high as five. And now those are all getting, you know, that 40 point reduction, which is just crazy when you think about it. So I can't wait. I hope Forge World does some reductions on things like the Night Lancer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, our fifth big thing that you need to know is stratagems. And we're not gonna go over all 29 of them because that's just silly, but there are some solid ones that we're gonna combo off with in here that I think are really kind of run the gamut for all the houses that you need to be aware of, but some are more spectacular than others. You've probably seen some of these already, so just kind of bear with me as we talk about it. Noble Sacrifice is huge, and I guess that was probably something we should have talked about, how the reactor system works on the Dominus there at point three. But the reactor system, you roll 2d6 now if you explode, right? And if any of them are a six, if either one is a six, it explodes 2d6 and everything suffers d6 mortal wounds, right? Uh, if you roll both sixes, it explodes 3d6 and of course does d6 mortal wounds as well. Now, this particular stratagem for 2 CP is going to allow you uh, to explode on a 4-up on either of those dice if you're Dominus, or a 4-up just straight up if you are an Armager or a Questorus class. In addition, if you're a Dominus class, if either of the rolls, or excuse me, if both of the rolls are 4-up, you're going to explode out 3d6, which is um, amazingly, remember, 
3D6 is 11 inches, folks. That's 11 inches around. That's 22 inches in diameter. That, let me grab my tape measure here and just show you. It probably won't even fit in the, I don't have a tape measure. I am tape measureless. It won't even fit in the camera, I guarantee you. That is how big that explosion radius is if it happens and it does D6 to everything. There is no reason for knights to hang out in your deployment zone with the rest of your things like this. Run those suckers up like that mobility and firepower and the ability to close and put punches on things is where the knight codex is at. Just take all those ideas to sit in your deployment zone. Don't do that. I'm telling you right now, that's really, really bad. Okay, so Noble Sacrifice, definitely good in more than one situation. So I'll say it's probably 50% good most of the time. Uh, if you do, you know, happen to suffer catastrophic damage, which these guys, you've seen Bane Blades die all the time. There's no reason why these won't die, but they're a little bit more resilient. We're going to talk about that. Sky Reaper Protocols is pretty baller. Going back to those Hellverns that we talked about. Anytime they make an attack against an enemy unit that can fly, remember not just it's not just planes anymore. Jump pack stuff, all that, all of those things can have the fly keyword. So always check. Until the end of the phase, you can reroll fail the hit rolls for the armager's auto cannons. This is during the shooting phase. So you're gonna know you before you roll, you just play it. One CP, boom, done. Rotate ion shields up here is a huge, huge, huge strat. You need to be aware of this. It's not new. It just got a little bit of an update with for three CPs now for the Dominus class. So one for everybody else, three CPs for Dominus. And it's going to allow you to simply put until the end of the phase, the vehicle's unit and vulnerable save is improved by one. But remember, ions only work against ranged attacks. There is a way to get ranged and close combat. It's a relic, probably not worth taking, but you can. Just be aware of that. So for the most part, not going to help you in close combat. Is going to help you against range so you're probably only going to be doing it when you're being shot at uh by the enemy unit no big deal nothing nothing very out of the ordinary here the way to get it down to a three up and we're going to show you is through the use of a warlord trait which we're going to kind of explain the uh, uh kind of the nuances and stuff of that here in a second relic side of things which you may or may not want to also take you have the opportunity to scoop up this isn't anything new for one cp you can get a relic for any of your characters but remember the only way to get a character is to take a super heavy detachment also you could play the exalted court which allows you uh to have a, a quest source or a dominus class from your army gain the key the character keyword and then you get to choose an imperial knight's warlord trait for them however they are not your warlord only for the purposes of this warlord trait. So like some of them that say your warlord gets a whatever, then that would count for them and them only, okay? So a couple of different important distinctions here that work together, but also work kind of separately depending on what you're trying to do. So all of these things are very good in certain situations and also generally just good overall. Pack hunters, I'm not gonna really talk about that, but just be aware that there's a way to get reroll failed charge rules for your armature war graves. Uh, kind of bubbled out, but there's also another house that's probably just worth taking and just kind of not even worry about any of that at all. Oathbreaker Guidance System. Now let's spend a minute on this because there's a couple of there's a couple of gotchas you need to be aware of. So first off, it's two CPs and allows you to shoot one of your Shield Breaker missiles in your shooting phase. Remember, you can only shoot one of these per turn in your shooting phase. And the Valiant's going to come with four stock. It can target a unit that's not visible to its bearer, and you can target a character even though it's not the closest unit. Now, if you're not on board and you've been living in a cave the past three weeks, the Shieldbreaker missile is incredibly powerful in and of itself. It takes the Shieldbreaker name from the Vindicare Assassin's special Shieldbreaker round, which also negates invulnerable saves. It's a 48-inch range weapon. It's heavy one, strength 10, neg four, D6 damage. You can only fire one a turn, and invulnerable saves cannot be made against wounds caused by this weapon. So pretty incredible weapon. And the fact that it's restricted to firing one, each one per once per battle, unless you reload it with a terrain piece, which is a whole nother can of worms we're not really gonna talk about, except for the fact that, remember, terrain takes up a separate detachment, probably not worth taking, to be quite honest. Sorry. It's cool casually, not really cool in the, the medium to semi, the semi-competitive to the competitive levels, I don't feel like. All right, back on track. So what this does is allow you to snipe out characters and things you can't see within 48, which is 
And with a movement of 10 and a range of 48, you're, for the most part, at 60 inches, which is five feet from you know your original starting point, I think you're gonna be able to get range to most things. Let's just throw it out there. Let's call it, let's call it what it is. Call a spade a spade. So there it is. Now, here's the interesting part. First off, a little a little cycle of rules to lay down on you. It doesn't necessarily apply to this, but there are um, some flowchart issues here that we need to talk about. So when it comes to shooting, unless otherwise stated, each model in a unit attacks with all the ranged weapons it is armed with. After all the units models, after all the units models have fired, you can choose another unit to shoot with until all eligible units that you want to shoot with have done so. So Unless otherwise stated, each model in the unit attacks with all of the ranged weapons it is armed with. Meaning that if it didn't say these were one use only and you can only fire one per round, you would have to fire all four shield breaker missiles per shooting phase. As soon as you said, okay, I'm going to the shooting phase, I select the Valiant, you would have to launch all four missiles. This is an incredibly overlooked rule. The most people out there, it applies so much out there to so many things. And I feel like a lot of people have just been accidentally cheating. Remember, 40K is a college class, folks. It's not pass or fail. We're talking like A's, B's, C's. I think for the most of us, we play at like a B minus level. We're missing stuff all the time still. And this this is only like a like an eight page rule book. And we're still missing like key phrases like how to measure is off here in the margin. Like how to measure distances over here in the margin. Like why is it there? Like, we miss stuff all the freaking time, folks. So, you know, this whole, like, cheating thing, that's a whole nother separate issue. But just be aware that sometimes we just don't know, and we just don't read, and we just miss things. That is a huge denotation to know right there. Now, why am I mentioning all this? Well, because there's a stratagem out there that's kind of the scourge of the scene right now called Agents of Vec. It's three command points. You can only play it if you're Dark Eldar and you're Cabal of the Blackheart. What it does is it says, hey, you can't play that stratagem now. Not only can you not play that stratagem, but you get your command points back for not playing that stratagem. But here's the kicker. You still have to fire that missile. So if you say, okay, I'm gonna launch my shield breaker. I'm gonna indirect it. I'm gonna try to get your squishy Dark Eldar or Eldar character probably in, in that said army. I'm gonna try to, you know, rain down hellfire on him. Uh, agents of that can't do it. Okay, cool. I'm not gonna fire the missile. I think rules is written. You still have to fire the missile. So that's the kind of roundabout explanation there for two different reasons. It says before choosing a target with shield breaker, you uh, it can target. You still have to when you select when you select a model to fire. It has to fire all available weapons, and you have to direct them if they're, you know, if you're splitting fire, which is right up here. Choose range weapon. It explains into that. So now, now that we just spent five minutes talking about this, uh, we're all on the same page. Hopefully, now feel free to comment below about how you feel about that. Uh, as far as I can tell, and conventional wisdom out there and a lot of different forums are saying the same thing. So I'm gonna just have to go ahead and agree with them on all of that. Full Tilt is another stratagem that you're definitely going to want to be aware of. Use this in your charge phase. Choose an enemy knight's vehicle from your army that advanced this turn, and a model can declare a charge even though it advanced in this turn. You're probably like thinking to yourself, wait a minute, all your weapons are heavy. Why the F would you advance with any of your, of your, your models? Because then you couldn't fire them. Because there's not really a whole lot of assault weapons on knights. Well, we're going to explain that one to you because there's a, there's a little secret right there. So just keep in mind the fact that Armagers move 14, uh, Big Knight, Old Ahab moves 10, and Questorus move 12 inches. Then we've got the Chain Sweep. And the Chain Sweep, coupled with the Thunder Stomp and also the Death Grip, you've got a 3 CP kind of triangle of death here that you can play, which is really super interesting when you think about it. So all of these three activate immediately after fighting with an Imperial Knight. So you say, uh, selecting this guy to swing, I swing, I do all my stuff, I do my close combat attacks if they have it. The Valiants don't have a close combat weapon, believe it or not. They do have attacks, so they do have four attacks, it is going to be at strength eight. Uh, but other than that, you're probably better off swinging with your titanic feet, which are always a crowd pleaser, 
uh, for three attack rolls with each weapon, you're swinging 12 times with that. So they do more damage with their feet because they have no offensive punchy fists or anything like that. But that being said, if you had a different model, perhaps a Gallant that we talked about earlier, which not only possesses a Reaper Chainsword, but also a Thunderstrike Gauntlet, and both of these apply to the Relics, which they list right there, the Special Relics, then you can perform additional attacks to go along with it. The Chain Sweep is going to go against everything within 3 inches. You roll a D6 for each enemy model within 3 inches. On a 6, that enemy model suffers a Mortal Wound. That's going to be a, more of a tactical kind of play because you're going to have to go up against mobs and they don't have a chance to pile in yet probably on you. So you may, may or may not be affected because you're rolling a, a six. Death Grip is incredibly powerful. For one CP, you snatch up a single enemy unit. It could be a rhino, could be a character, could be a shield captain. And you roll a strength check, you roll... 8 plus a d6, they roll their strength, which is probably 4 or 5, plus a d6. If they don't equal or beat you, they take d3 mortal wounds, and you keep repeating it until either they're dead or they beat you. That's nuts. That is super crazy good. So, a good way to do a lot of damage for 1 CP. This will probably be getting looked at, although it does require a lot of, you know, things. You have to have a Thunder Strike all, you have to have Freedom's Hand, so, I mean, technically... Canis Rex can do it. The Thunder Stomp is a little bit easier to get off whenever you fight with an Imperial Knight. Choose an infantry or swarm unit within one inch. That model, on a roll of a four up, suffers D3 mortal wounds. So you can do this with the Valiant. You can do this with the Gallant, both of them. But just be aware that if you need to pick up a squad, there are ways to get additional attacks right here, which is the Triangle of close combat, kicky, punchy, killy with your big freaking robots. Technical term, TN. Woo! Can't remember a time when I wasn't talking about stratagems. <laughs> oh my goodness, they're so good. We're not even we're not even to the juicy, juicy stuff quite yet. Okay. Try to make this as quick and as painless as possible. So next up we've got two to talk about. One to definitely be aware of, but we're gonna cover that here in a different section. And one more that's kind of a question mark. So Valiant Last Stand, you use this whenever a Quester Imperialis uh, model is reduced to zero wounds. So it doesn't matter whether it's Mechanicus or, excuse me, it does matter. It's not Imperial Knights. It's only Questar Imperialis. So this isn't going to pertain to one of the houses that we're going to uh, about to talk about here in our breakdown. Before removing it from the battlefield, model can immediately shoot as if it were a shooting phase or fight as if it were a fight phase. Uh, after resolving these attacks, assume the model has one wound remaining when determining characteristics to use on its damage table. So for the most part, it's going to be hitting on fives, I think threes if you're Canis Rex. But eh, kind of meh, unless you use it in certain, certain circumstances, which we'll talk about here in a second. Benevolence of the Machine God is silly good. Use a stratagem when a Quester Mechanicus model from your army suffers a mortal wound. Roll a d6 for that mortal wound and each other mortal wound inflicted on the model the rest of the phase. On a 5 up, it's ignored. So it's a 5 up feeling of pain, which you really don't see very often. So you need to 3 damage stuff, 5 up feeling of pains, plus 1 the wounds. Those are all mechanics. You need to Your ears need to perk up and be like, whoa, I need to pay attention to this. Where do, well, how, how do I use that? That's important. Uh, <laughs> so whenever it suffers a mortal wound for the addition of the phase, so obviously mortal wounds generally get spammed out in the psychic phase, so this would be a good one for the enemy psychic phase, but they still can happen in enemy shooting phase, which you're free to go ahead and play it again. It's pretty huge. Machine Spirit Resurgence, also for Quester Mechanicus. Pick a Quester Mechanicus uh, from your army at the start of any turn. Until the end of this turn, you use the top row of the model's damage table regardless of how many wounds it has left. This ends immediately if the model is reduced to zero wounds. So if you've taken a lot of damage, you know, you just go ahead and pop this and be like, I'm immediately back in the game, hitting on threes for the most part with uh, the knights. Although some knights do hit on twos, such as Canis Rex. Uh, it's pretty huge. Now there is gonna be a bit of an FAQ question. This allows you to kind of outflank a knight that isn't any Questorus or Armager class, so not the Dominus class. 
it does not allow you to set it up on the battlefield. So I feel like per the beta, you cannot do this on turn one, but it will need some clarification. You get to set it up within six inches of any battlefield edge and nine inches away from enemy models. But again, probably needs some clarification. I feel like it's a little expensive for three CPs if you can't do it on turn one. But then again, maybe that's all by design. I don't know. So look for some clarification on this one. Uh, but I'm sure folks will try to do it turn one, although rules is written. I don't think you can per the beta FAQ. Okay, so that's our strats to know. Let's talk about the households. So our top three picks for the households to play, not just based on their traditions, but also everything else they can do, would probably be the top being Raven, which is Quester Mechanicus. The Questorus, I would say Terran, and Hawk Shroud. And here's why. Well, maybe with Volker kind of bringing up the rear on Questorus Mechanicus Knights. But let's go over it real quick. Terran allows you to reroll an extra D6 for advancing or charging, and you discard the lowest roll. Their trait, the Warlord trait, which I'm going to mention these, but none of these are probably ever going to get taken where because we'll talk about the Warlord trait here in a second. Uh, that's probably going to get taken quite a bit by uh, by most folks. So you can reroll failed charge rolls for your Warlord. It also has a Battle Cannon replacement that's huge in the fact that it's some plus one strength, so it's strength nine. But perhaps more importantly is the fact that you roll a 3d6 discarding the lowest die for the number of shots. That's pretty huge. So uh, Rapid Fire Battle Cannon, 72 inch range, heavy 2d6, Strength 9 for this one, neg 2 damage, or excuse me, neg 2 AP, D3 damage. Their stratagem is glory and honor for 3 CPs. You may fight twice with a knight. Pretty huge. I think it's definitely worth notating. Terran is the ultimate run up in your face and kick things. Not too much on the resilient side, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Hawk Shroud is more on the resilient side. Their tradition allows you to have double wounds for stat line purposes. Uh, when you take damage. So what that means is, you know, your 28 wound knight normally starts to degrade stat line at 14, well, half wound. So when it hits 13, it becomes, you know, a little bit harder to hit and shoot and move and such like that. And then it goes down, you know, another four. So once you hit six wounds, I guess that's probably, no, it'd be seven wounds. So to get to that point, it takes a lot because you count as having double. So to get to the first point of degradation, you would need to be at 13 wounds, which automatically you are you you count as 26. So you really have to get it down to seven wounds to even keep it out of that top bracket. I think is the math on it. Yeah, obviously, I'm I'm off by one or two right there, but you get the drift. It's pretty powerful. Uh, it's trait again. Probably not taking this in any regards. At the start of first battle round, before the first turn begins, select one of your opponent's army and add one to hit rolls made for your warlord against that unit. It's good, but again, there's better. Angel's Grace is the relic for them. Roll a d6 each time the bear suffers a mortal wound in the opponent's psychic phase, and on a four up, that wound is ignored. So it's restricted to the psychic phase only, and ignored on a four up. Whereas that stratagem allows you to do it at any. Time you're targeted and it lasts for the rest of the phase and it's a five up. Their stratagem specific to them is uh, staunch allies, two CPs. You may fire overwatch on an enemy unit if your knight is within 12 inches of the unit being charged. Now this is for any Imperium keyword, not just knights. So you're gonna be, you know, taking a battle force attachment with Imperium stuff. We're gonna talk about that here in a minute. So this is pretty huge. Uh, you can also heroically intervene your knights up to, or that knight, up to 2d6 so pretty ridiculous a knight just moving on average seven inches to heroically intervene against something that assaulted after you get to shoot it too if the unit that was declared target of a charge by an enemy if you're within 12 of your imperium keyword unit pretty ridiculous i like it now throw all that aside we're going to talk about quester mechanicus there's one of the four Quester Mechanicus houses. It's House Raven. That's all those crazy red dudes that you've seen on like everything that isn't blue, I guess. Right there, House Raven. Crazy, ridiculous fluff and background on those guys. Their tradition is whenever they make advanced moves, treat heavy weapons as assault weapons. 
I'm gonna say that again, but slower. When they make advanced moves, treat heavy weapons as assault weapon. So what that means is, majority of knights have heavy weapons. So you're gonna be able to move your 10 inches with your big guy, throw a d6, make an advance, and still shoot your weapons as assault weapons. They'll be a, they'll be a neg one because they're assault weapons. But you advanced, okay? Seems good. If you're the Questorus, you're moving your 12, doing the same d6. So probably four, so 16. Still shooting your guns at neg one. Who cares at that point? Uh, but the key word is that you can move, advance and still shoot because what do we say about one of those strats are you telling me there's a strat that allows you to charge after you advance so it's like all of the worlds all together 40k fat kid buffet right here right now give it to me i want all the abilities that's ridiculous what <laughs> like Maybe I'm missing something, but I feel like that all has play and works on the flowchart. So look out for that one. That is crazy. Their trait, again, not going to take it as much. Uh, add one to saving throws for attacks to have an AP characteristic of neg one. So effectively canceling out, who cares? The relic is the bearer and volatate. Involate. Words are hard sometimes. Reroll hits a one in a fight phase for house units within six inches of the bear. So if you do take this relic and you kind of squat up around, say, you know, old Ahab, the Valiant, uh, and you do take this relic, which is the ways to take multiple relics, then you could uh, reroll your ones in a fight phase for that because you're going to want to get up there and get punchy. But it's probably not super necessary. Uh, their stratagem specific to them is to reroll all rolls of one made for the night in the shooting phase. So that's, and they, and let me, let me just show you, I want, I want to show you the specific wording on this because it doesn't restrict. It just says examples of, and that's super important. So use the stratagem at the start of your shooting phase, pick a house Raven model from your army until the end of the phase, reroll all rolls of one for that model. So end of phase. So everything in the shooting phase, your hit, your to wounds, your um, weapon damage rolls, everything, all of this stuff, any sort of triggers on anything, you can reroll ones right here. It's, it's pretty powerful. Very, very powerful stratagem for two CPs and it's specific to them. Kind of crazy. Um, it pairs well with uh, this stuff here too. Because say, for instance, and this this could be a long convoluted going back and forth. And if you played a lot of uh, more on the competitive side of 40K, you can see how this happening. So say you shoot a squad of, I don't know, Dark Angel Hellblasters and you kill a bunch of them, but their banner goes off. They roll some fours. They get to shoot you back all dur during the shooting phase. You get now have to make saving throws with your knight. It's still the shooting phase. You can still reroll once to save your your saving throws, your invulnerable saves, your whatever. That, that's incredibly powerful. Like there's so many different scenarios and they just said examples, they did not restrict. The wording here says, uh, this includes, this is not limited to, this is not limited to right here. This is hugely powerful. Very, very powerful stuff right here. Um, pretty good, I can't wait to get some House Raven on, on the tabletop. So those are our top three picks. Again, we broke them down a little bit more on the podcast, along with our podcast, uh, episode 152, go look for it. It's on YouTube. Of course, it's on um, iTunes and all that stuff as well. That was kind of the meat and potatoes of that whole episode. But we're uh, we're trudging forward. We're getting there. We're going to talk about our best traits and relics that you need to be aware of next. All right. Our seventh thing you need to know is best traits and relics. I kind of lopped them together because there really is only a couple um, that really kind of pertain to the content we're throwing out right now. Uh, number, well, th the first one is definitely number two on the chart right here. I am Bulwark. <laughs> Your Warlord has a four up and vulnerable save against ranged weapons. Just straight up, boom. Hands down, one of the best Warlord traits. Um, 
probably one of the one of the better ones out there just in general but for knights it's incredible because now you can rotate ion down to a three up so definitely something that you're going to want to have all day every day you need to be a character okay uh to get this which you can do if you take the super heavy detachment or you can just play the stratagem to do it as well so just something to be kind of aware of right there right uh land strider is pretty good too add two to all advanced and charge rolls for friendly household units within six of your warlord but you couldn't you're probably going to want to put that in your big daddy that's going to hold your line so land strider probably isn't going to come into play here although you might want it with house Terran, something in house Terran uh that will be in your line your formation moving forward just something to think about but i don't think it's going to see as much play as uh the developers and designers originally thought relic wise there's a couple of good ones in here um you could take the two up save relic to get down to two but there's so much stuff with neg one right now it kind of kind of doesn't matter it's like you're a three up but then you go to a two up and you have to blow a command point in, in order to do it doesn't even matter because if you're a two up and they're hitting you with the neg one you're gonna be going up to your three up anyways like do you play the stratagem because they're shooting you with other stuff too and it just it works for the whole shooting phase like i don't know i gotta roll that out but just be aware of this it's there here's that five up and vulnerable save against ranged and melee weapons which is good and bad like i said uh it's something to be aware of but it doesn't work with rotate ion shields, I don't believe, because rotate ion shields, let's see. Uh, no, I guess it does. Oh, you know I mean? oh cause it only, it, rotate ion only works in the shooting phase. That's why it doesn't work. It could work if it's a shooting phase, but it won't work in the, uh, the melee. So just something to be aware of right there. The, there's some good stuff here. Oh, Trader's Pyre. So this is the Configuration Flamer and on crack <laughs> uh it's gonna allow you to not just automatically hit your target stat lines the same you're gonna auto hit your target because you roll your 3d6 and you get whatever generally it's 11 that's the average but you get now get to reroll failed wound rolls for this weapon and a strength seven if something is assaulting you and it's an infantry model you're probably going to be wounding it on a three or perhaps potentially a two if you're squishy eldar and now you get to reroll that like ooh, that's going to be bad times for them at neg two two damage so i feel like you auto take this relic because you get you get the one right off the bat. You throw this on your old Ahab all day, every day, right there. If you are gonna go with the Castellan, you may want to think about the Cowl's Wrath, which is the super plasma on crack. It's an extra strength characteristic and an extra AP characteristic and an extra damage. This thing is is bad times, bad bad times for anybody you put this on the Castellan. It's pretty nuts. Uh, the Thunder of Altaris, we talked about that. That's the Terran special rule that allows you to roll 2d6 for the heavy rapid fire battle cannon and discard the low, or excuse me, three, discard the lowest. Pretty good, definitely something else uh, to be aware of. However, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on, uh, on anything else uh, because I just feel like it's not good synergy with the rest of the stuff out there. All right, now we get to demonstrate our crazy amount of technology here at Spiky Bits. I am gonna grab a sheet of printer paper <laughs> and a pen, and we're gonna talk about some example armies. So, for <laughs> this is this is what it's all gonna come down to. Okay, so let's start here. This is uh, kind of an army that we've been working on uh, on the podcast for a, a little while, and it's. Uh, there's some tweaks to it and some different ways we can go with it. I'm going to John Madden it pen and paper style for you right here. So first up, we're going to start with our knights. We're going to go with a super heavy uh, detachment, right? And go with uh, our valiant, old Ahab. He's 595. And then shooty armagers, because why not? So uh, we need at least two more. These are the hellburns, right? And we need at least two more, but we'll go ahead and take three. 174 each. All day, every day, 174. That's gonna give us a grand total of 1117. <laughs> Any Spartans out there? And, or 943 if you take a shooty one out, which, whichever, we'll just kind of bracket that right there. It's good to know. Now we're gonna throw in some custodes. We love our custodes. A Vanguard, no, this would be Supreme because they're HQs, right? So 160, 160, 160. 
We will take Shield Captain on Jet Bike, of course. Is there any other way to take them? And my technology has failed me. Did I ever tell you about the, the time Games Workshop tried to hire me? All I got was a stupid pen. <laughs> oh, let's see if this works. Okay, here we go. Shield Captain. Captain. So this is going to be foul 80. All day, every day right there. And then we'll throw in a guard battalion. We'll say GB for short. And this is really easy. Uh, 285, this is going to get you uh, two company commanders and three infantry squads with mortars. So that's going to be nine man units. So if you're you know worried about Reaper and ITC, that, that'll uh, definitely help you right there. And of course, we're going to sub in two we don't have to but we got two heavy weapon teams with three mortars each so a total of 12 mortars to drop bombs and then of course we're going to take them cadian because you give them the order they're already re-rolling ones so if you give them the order they're re-rolling everything which is pretty huge uh we won't take let's see we won't take We'll take uh, the Aquila on um, one of the dudes, so we get to Command Point Farm, and we'll make the other company commander the Grand Strategist. So we have our one Relic, we have our Warlord. We're 100% legal as a battalion. We're gonna get five CP, we're gonna get one over here, we're gonna get three for being an army. Now, here's where the problem lies, and we talked about this. Uh, this right here normally would give us three, but it's not because we stocked it full of armagers, buster armagers, so to speak. So we're going to get a big fat goose egg right there, unfortunately. Not only that, but we still get a character in here because it is Battleforge and we did take a super heavy. So we're going to make him our character. We're going to spend one CP to... Uh, do the court where we get to give him a warlord. We get to give him a relic So we're gonna give him the relic the four up or Excuse me. We're gonna make we're gonna make him a warlord. Well, not the warlord You know what I mean, and we're gonna give him the four up invul The so easy game easy life right there over here on the custodius now. There's a couple different ways to do this um, I think the easiest way is to just open up the vaults for one CP actually we'd have to do three CP because we're doing two yes because we're doing two so we're gonna give them the four we're gonna give one of them the four up in ball and we're gonna give one of them one of the well they all just have four okay let's try that again all of them have a four up in ball and are scoring because they're custodes and the defenders of humanity super super duper friends then we'll give one of them the three plus in ball and reroll charge relic and then we'll give the other one eagle's eye which is plus one in bowl so we're gonna have to spend our three cp so three cp and four cp so we're gonna be down so we're at nine so we're gonna be down to five cp before the game even begins but the beauty of this is uh you set these guys up after your company commander's on the board so you can use your aquila to try to roll for each of these because as long as he's on the board you get to roll for this so that'd be kind of cool you're gonna get uh one two three four four chances to roll a five and try to recoup some of these right here so maybe you'll get one and then i'll give you six and whenever your enemy plays a uh, stratagem you're gonna get use grand strategies to try to get some of it back as well so chances are they're gonna do some pre-game shenanigans or something like that you might get to roll if your strategy if your warlords on the table over here with grand strategies in your guard battalion and get some of those back as well and kind of start stacking that deck for those one and two and maybe three command point stratagems that you're going to play now this i think points out to 1882 and there's a little bit of play here too because obviously if at 2k you're looking at about 120 points right here so you only need technically this to make your super heavy detachment legal where you get the character and you're good to go on that regard. So you could add that to this and get rid of one of these hell of these armagers. Now remember too, if you take these as Raven, these armagers, they're already not suffering the neg one to shoot. But if you're house Raven, you get to advance 
treat them as assault weapons, right? They'd be neg one to shoot because uh, there they would be assault weapons and you're advanced with them. And I'll have to check to see if that actually has play right there. But I think it's just uh, neg one. I think it's worded no penalties for moving and shooting heavy weapons, not for assault weapons. So I think you're still going to be the neg one right there. I don't think there's any way around that. But four D3 shots, even at neg one, hitting on threes, now fours, is... Yeah, it says for heavy weapons, so it becomes an assault weapon. So it's probably not going to have play there. It's still pretty strong. So you throw in an extra 120 points here, gets you up to 290. You've got 290 points to play with potentially between these. You could flesh out your your Acadian uh, battalion a little bit more if you want. You can't quite. I really tried to crunch the numbers here and get in a brigade, but the cheapest brigade I could do is 624, and that's just strictly bare bones. It was just embarrassingly small what you could get there so we couldn't quite do it unfortunately and that would give you an extra uh that would give you 10 command points right off the bat that would give you an extra five which would be spectacular but i don't think you can so that being said i'm still i'm still pretty happy with this it gives you plenty of wiggle room if you want to splash the pot with your particular play style hell you could even take pask sub out one of these company commanders perhaps you know take some uh, take some rattlings to kind of box out things in squads of 10 right here in your elite slot platoon commander switch out take pass with pass he's not sold separately definitely gets you a primary psyker to give you plus one uh to your save or perhaps neg one to hit whichever take two take two psychers they're cheap 46 points whatever uh it gives you some wiggle room definitely gives you some wiggle room i think it, it might be kind of neat i personally would like to have pass over an armager call me call me crazy but I'm a fan of the Knight Commander. <laughs> so there it is. You heard it here first. John Madden says, all you got to do is score objectives and kill the enemy to win the game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, well, this has been an extremely long video, but I had a lot of fun with it. I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Talking about Knights, um, really exciting, super flavorful. Who doesn't love giant freaking robots on the tabletop? And hopefully we got, we got you some really good pointers and direction on at least eight good points to know for feeling knights with imperium of course you could do it completely separate completely separate you know from all of these guys it's going to be really hard to farm uh command points or perhaps you can go the other way and take you know a, a brigade over here and get you more knights cut out the custodies altogether. but the custodies are powerful they're very 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 powerful indeed so i think they're worth having in there However, you know, with a lot of other knights on the table, shield breaker missiles and death grip, they're going to make a mockery of these guys right here. So just be aware of that. Uh, they are strong, but they will not survive the, a lot of shield breaker missiles and death and getting death grass. That is 100% for sure right there. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed our top eight things you need to know about the Imperial Knight Codex and how to build an army list. That's a working title. I'm going to make it a little bit better in our, <laughs> in our title above right there make sure to work out those hobby muscles click subscribe turn on notifications and make sure you head on over to longwar.net it's the home of the battle ports for exclusive content early access videos and manufacturer discount codes become a veteran of the long war today deleted scenes bonus content and all the interviews and post game wrap-up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longwar.net Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.